Hello and welcome to Droip. In this video, we'll get introduced to the Content Manager in Droip. With the Content Manager, you no longer have to depend on third-party solutions to manage your dynamic data. Instead, you can now visually build dynamic websites simply using Droip and its built-in Content Manager. Let's see a few examples of the type of content that needs to be managed dynamically. With Drive's Content Manager, we can create and manage dynamic content such as blog posts, recipes, teams, jobs, listings, etc. Now that we know where Content Manager is being used, let's see the Content Manager in action. To get into the Content Manager panel, navigate to the top bar and click on the Content Manager button. After getting into the Content Manager, we are greeted with the Add New button, telling us to create a new collection. In Drive, a collection is a structured set of related content items that you can manage centrally and display dynamically on your website. Collections allow us to group similar types of content, such as blog posts, projects, or team members, and manage them efficiently within the Content Manager. Each collection is composed of individual entries, each entry being a unique instance of the content type defined by the collection. Let's create our first collection. Clicking the Add New button will open the settings page where we can manage our collection. To the left of this page, we'll see the list of collections we create for our website, and to the right, we'll see the preview of the selected collection. And in the middle, we have our main settings, where we can add names and fields for our collection. To begin with, we have a few collection presets to help you get started. These presets can be a huge helping hand in figuring out how we want our collection to look like and save us a lot of time. For example, we could use the team member preset if we wanted to create a collection to display our team members. Similarly, we have presets for portfolios, projects, recipes, jobs, clients, and listings. We can also select any of these presets and start editing the fields from here as well. Now, let's look into how we can create a collection from scratch. Although we have a preset for team members, let's create one from scratch to show you how you can use custom fields to create any collection you want. Firstly, we have to give our collection a name in the collection name input box. We'll name our collection team and also set the collection link. Here, we have the option of setting our own collection URL. However, if we don't, Droip will create one for us based on the collection name. Next, we have the basic fields. The name field, which is used to specify the title or name of the entry, and the slug field, which is used to define a URL-friendly version of the name. These two fields are there by default, but if we want to edit the fields settings, we can do that by clicking on them, which will open the fields settings panel. Now, let's add a few custom fields to our collection. The collection fields allow you to tailor the data entry process to our specific needs. Firstly, we'll add the text field which is used for adding short pieces of text. The main option in the settings of the fields are field name which is the label of the field, help text, default value and making the field a required entry. These settings are the same for every field. Each field also has settings specific to their needs which we'll see as we add more fields. We'll give our text field a name and also add a help text. We'll set the character limit of 10 characters and make it a required field. Next, we'll add a rich text field. We'll name it description and follow the previous process for this field as well. We'll also add an image field to add a picture of our team member. We'll name it profile picture and add a help text. Here, we can set the size limit of the image file and also allow any specific format or all formats to be uploaded. Let's also add an email field. This field stores email addresses. For the email field, we'll keep the name as email, but here we'll add a default value and also make it a required field. Next, we'll add a number field that stores numerical figures. In the number field, we'll name it years of experience. Here, we have the option to allow only integers, decimals, or allow all formats. We don't want to allow any negative numbers, so we'll leave that option unticked. However, if we want, we can allow negative numbers by selecting it. Next, we'll add a switch field, which will help us filter through our items as the number of collection items grows. 
we'll name this field current employee and make it a required field. The option field, which acts like a drop down and gives the person adding the content a few options to select from. In the option field, we'll name it position and add a help text. And we'll also rename the options we have and add a few more positions. Lastly, we'll add a URL field that allows us to store web addresses. Here, we'll simply name it LinkedIn to add LinkedIn profile links. On the left side of the page, we can see a preview of our collection, giving us an idea of how our collection is going to look like. And there you go, we have just created our first collection. To learn more about the custom fields we did not use in this video, check out Drive's documentation from the link in the description. In the next video, we'll see how we can add collection items to this collection. See you in the next one.